Hello and welcome to the Education on Fire podcast. The place where we share creative and inspiring learning in our schools. Season 2, Episode 11. Hi and welcome back to part two of our um, our Barefoot um, podcast here on Education on Fire. Um, I'm now joined by Simon Vaughan Long. Thanks very much for joining us. Um, and yeah, can you give us a little bit of background about um, yourself? You're, you're a volunteer who actually delivers some of the workshops for Barefoot. Um, but can you give us a bit of background about your professional side as well and, and how, how important that is to the, the volunteer side of Barefoot or, or, or whether it's not and just sort of how the whole thing sort of fits together a little no, bit? That's fine. Uh, so yeah, I, I joined BT about six years ago now um, and uh, I'd, had a, uh, I'd had a history in IT development um, for about 20 years before that um uh, so it's a it's a bit of a passion uh, close to my heart um and joining bt there there's this um there's a uh, program whereby they encourage you to volunteer uh, and there's many different things you can do from doing telethons in the bt tower and so forth i've done a few of those um and, and barefoot came on board just after the curriculum changed a couple of years ago um and because i've got two not so young boys now um that, that they grow up very fast uh, and i've got a i've got an interest in it this whole idea about the change in the curriculum and having IT uh, and having the computing element to it and understanding how that fits in and the new words to be involved, I thought I could give something back. You know, I've got an interest there, especially with uh, my, my boys, even though they're in secondary school now. I wanted to marry those two up and thought, I, I've got a bit of a passion for this. Uh, so I, I, I felt this is something I could do and help out uh, and, and put something in. So marrying enthusiastic volunteering attributes that I've got and also a bit of a keen interest in IT and having two boys at school as well it seemed a bit of a a bit of a perfect storm almost. yeah, the, yeah. Ho- the whole thing sort of came together yeah and, yeah uh, absolutely yeah yeah and I, I like the the whole um ethos of um of BT um sort of supporting the whole volunteering um idea I think I think volunteering is an incredibly in, um, important thing in, especially in society at large I I personally volunteer at a, a local hospice um and I, I first got through that I'm um, involved in that through through music which was my passion and, and sort of my background but it's interesting how just once you open that door to sort of giving to other people and that sort of service of being able to support the community at large all sorts of things open up and you get a, a, it's really rewarding isn't it? I, I, absolutely that, that I've never worked for a company before whereby they have actively encouraged you to seek volunteering uh, opportunities and that, and that can be what you already do so people may be um, school governors for instance and that all counts towards it and they encourage that um and so when I when I came to BT and I, I you know, not a school governor or anything like that, I thought, well, what, what could I do? And as I say that I, I sought out a few different opportunities. Uh, but in the last year, when this came up, I, just looking around, and I thought, well, do you know what? I'd like to give this a go. And uh, yeah, really enjoyed uh, presenting. Yeah. Um, and does the IT background is that as essential for? I mean, Barefoot's a computing. Um, project as it were so is the IT essential or or, or is it or is it just a supporting factor and just because you're involved in, in the communications business it, yeah it, well, it, it was one of the search criteria that I sort of looked at but to actually deliver a workshop not at all I think enthusiasm for the for the subject so be you a parent be you somebody who may be a school governor perhaps somebody with IT or, or you, you just want to get into schools and help you know uh, where that's concerned anything like that um, is it, a starting point and, and there is no technical um, uh, requirement to, to to deliver these in any way, shape, or form. Enthusiasm and uh, and approach, really. And um, from a teacher's point of view, and, and all our listeners there, I mean that's that's perfect because presenting is what you do on on, on a daily basis. Absolutely. You know, you're just presenting and you're working with your children and and you're learning together. Um, and so to know that you've got those skills already must take some of the fear factor out when 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 you first go into a school and start. Um, thinking about delivering the workshop and, and actually and supporting the teachers and what it is they actually need to learn. Yeah, and, and, and BC encourage people to do, if you if you don't want to do it as a single, uh, as, a, as a, a person on your own, uh, you, you can buddy up with somebody else. And again, they encourage that and they say, well, if you don't want to do it on your own or you want to do a couple with somebody else, first of all, uh, we can buddy you up with somebody. So it's all part of the programme. They say, what are your requirements as a presenter? So it takes your needs into account um, and then matches you up with suitable schools, you know, in a local area. Uh, and if you need somebody as a bit of what you want to do it as a group then that's absolutely fine so so yeah great so this part of the podcast what i wanted to do is i wanted um to basically follow the step by steps of of what's involved in the workshop and we had a great conversation with karen talking about um 
sort of the background of Barefoot and, and what it can do and, and, and BT's involvement in all of that. But as, as a teacher, we got as far as saying, go to the Barefoot website um, and email in or select a workshop that you'd like to do. And that's kind of where we sort of finished that part of the journey. So from there, could you sort of carry us through a little bit more about what would happen from that point on? Okay. So, so there, there, are, there, there is a group of people who sit in the middle of the process of the school will ask for somebody to come and deliver a workshop and finding a suitable uh, volunteer uh, because it is based locally. You're not getting people traveling up and down the country. They want to do it as local as possible. Um, so if if there is something in, in an area that I can uh, travel to, then I'll be contacted by that, that central team in Barefoot. And, and they'll say, we have something. Uh, are you available to do it? And you know, sometimes you, you simply can't do it. But, you know, it's it's good having a number of people there. You know, they can spread the load somewhat. Uh, and I'll say, yeah, absolutely. I'll, I'm, I'm happy to deliver it. And they'll give you perhaps one or a number of dates that the school has specified. So the school will turn around and it, it could be as part of a um, a, a weekly meeting the school, school may have. Um, and they say, well, can we deliver it during this time when we'll have all the teachers together? And they'll specify those dates and, and we'll come to a, 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 a a mutually agreed date to say, yep, I'll come in on that particular date and time, and uh, yeah, everything will be set up. So, so once once that's agreed, so you can contact the school directly once you've got their email and just introduce yourself. Um, there will be a set of uh, documents, so, so uh, packs, learning packs that all the teachers will have at the end. So they can take all this material away, and they'll be delivered directly to the school. So that when I arrive as a volunteer, I really don't bring anything apart from perhaps a memory stick with the presentation, just in case they don't have it. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll plug that into a, a laptop or a PC, whatever it is, presenting uh, presenting what what we need to present. But all the all the material will be sent directly to the school, so I haven't got to carry it around and mislay anything. And if it isn't there, then obviously they can contact Barefoot themselves. Um, so 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 once once that communication, once that first contact's been made. Uh, and we agree a date, then everything's set up through Barefoot, and I'll turn up on the day ready ready to present to the teachers. What I really like about that is the fact that the teachers and the schools have got the support in whichever way they want to do it. So like you said, it, you, it can be individual, it could be a whole school thing, I guess it can be a cluster thing where you get teachers from different schools and and they, and, and sort of make that work as, as, as best they actually can. And I think anything which just feels supportive is just a great first step, isn't it? Just sort of making Absolutely. everyone re- relax before you even start to deliver uh, yeah. what's actually involved. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 a it's an environment that they all know. It's all done at the school, so you know, there's nothing that they're having to find their way around at the end of a busy day. We'll go in, appreciate that that, that it is at the end of perhaps what might, might have been a busy time for them, but. They don't have to go anywhere. It's set up in their environment so that they can feel at ease, as you say. And it's, it's nothing else to think, oh, I've got to do this, that and the other. It's very much sit down and write, what can we take out of this uh, of this session? Great. So so from there, what how, how does the workshop th- then develop? Is it a question of you standing up and presenting what they need to know or is it hands-on or, or what what sort of activities? So, so there's a bit of both, really. So, so there, there is a set presentation to, to introduce, the obviously, the idea of barefoot. So some of them may have turned up and they, they, haven't, they haven't been told everything about it. So they say, this is what it's about. This is the reason why it's here. And saying, what are the resources that are available? And giving them um, uh, some demonstrations about the resources that are there. So it's split into two sides, uh, two parts. The first part being, um, these are resources to help the teachers understand the different parts of the curriculum. So there's different terms they may not be familiar familiar with. Um, And those are broken down for the teachers to gain access to, build on their understanding they may have no understanding they may have some but it's, it supports them in their learning in their growth towards understanding what the IT curriculum the computing curriculum requires and then the second part is saying so what what do you have what, what what can we produce for you to take into the lessons and there are lesson plans there are lesson plans from the very beginning to say what do you need to set up with so it's one of the resources you require all the everything that needs to be downloaded can be downloaded directly um, and having a look at how that progresses through what you need to do during the session there can be there can be extension pieces to a, to a work so it's something that we might want to do a little bit more if they've finished the the tasks at hand there can be extension work there but there's also supplementary material for those that might need a little bit more support uh, so we, t- we go through all of that um, and there's parts of the presentation but what we will do is we'll open up the website so so I have a login to the Barefoots website and, and we encourage everybody to uh, to register on that on that website 
either beforehand or at the end of the session and say this is what we've got so open it up so they can see it at hand and see what they what they can interact with and it's it's very it's very self-explanatory there's lots of links backwards and forwards so if you want to go in to understand what an algorithm is you can supplement your understanding or do this in the session and then say so what what do i need to do what 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 lesson do i want to um do, do i want to um give tomorrow perhaps and it could be the algorithm is how do you make a piece of toast and that will link in directly into a lesson plan on how do you make a piece of toast so everything flows through so you start off in a certain point that may be to supplement your understanding and then say i want to deliver something along those lines and you click through the links very very simple like very very slick website to link all this together brilliant and and so can you just take us through that particular example i really like that example so the the the, the piece of toast um algorithm so in terms of presenting that and and the teacher who's not quite sure how that is how, how do you explain that and how, how does that work so through? so the way that's introduced so you have these new terms that teachers may not be aware of one of which is algorithm debugging decomposition all these things you may, may be thinking to yourself what on earth's going on here no idea what, what what it's to do with and we'll say okay an algorithm is broken down into this, this is how you define an algorithm that's for the teachers to get to to understand the concepts behind it and from that perspective you then say okay so I've, I've now understand what I understand what an algorithm is what can I introduce into the classroom to uh, to support that piece of work to support that part of the curriculum that I want to get, get across and it will and, and you'll have at the bottom say well what uh, what resources are available to support this part of the curriculum and you'll have and it will, it will be breaking down into key stage one key stage two you can it will link in it has to be cross-curricular as well so it could say so this could be something on the lines of and I may not be using the correct term um, a design and technology aspect so you said I want to do I want to interact with a design and technology lesson with an algorithm and it says well yep yeah, this particular lesson plan will do that for you and there'll be bits and pieces to do with sequences and so forth which obviously is maths based uh, and that will say okay yeah sequences you'll have an algorithm there's a reason why you go from one number to the next number to the next there's an algorithm that's built into there so there'll be another resource linked into sequencing and it will say oh this also covers maths so all this gets built up and seeing it with all these things you can talk about it but actually getting on online and seeing it work uh, is the way to get to understand how it all flows together how it all goes together and um and we touched on this a little bit when i was speaking to karen about the fact that it's it's about the way that you think and the computing manner which is um at the the core of really what barefoot is rather than i'm now going to learn how to code um and and, and that, that's essentially true isn't it and um and so um in terms of the computing curriculum how do those two things go together because i would imagine as a teacher sitting down thinking i'm going to do a barefoot project which is based on computing where do I start coding? <laughs> Absolutely. Is, is, is that a oh, common? It can be very daunting. You know, anything in life, if you, if you start at the end, if you start at what you need to finish at, you can, you can get lost in a whole wrath of um, you know, lots of bit, different pieces of information and really not get anywhere with it. So, so what, what Barefoot will do is it will say, okay, if you want to get to a stage where you will be coding at the end, that's fine. But think about all the building blocks that need to be put in place first. So understanding what an algorithm is and what have you. And then once you understand algorithms and debugging, decomposition, all these words that will be thrown at, at you to say, when you've got this understanding in place, building on the next level, in, introducing things like Scratch, which I know a lot of the schools use, it's say, well, this actually builds upon all those elements you've learned at this level and say, well, how do we get into Scratch? And Scratch is another stage to then becoming a uh, somebody programming in HTML, for instance, and I, I certainly don't know how to program in HTML, but you could get a child in year five and six who will be more than proficient because of the building box being put in place that, that Barefoot supports to say, I understand the journey that I've been on to get to the stage of being programming in whatever language it's going to be means your understanding moving from HTML to Java to whatever other programming language it will be, you just simply move, the, and it's, it, it's simply the construct will change. The, the programming language may be different, but the whole basis behind it will still mean I need to have an algorithm in place. I need to have something that I, I need to make sure I'm going to debug this correctly, for instance. So, so that, that, that building block, that structure being put in place from a very early age, from key stage one, um, means that moving into later years in key stage two and doing programming really is a natural step uh, and, and, and very well supported. And, and so from someone who's not, like myself is not delivering the um the curriculum in their school because uh, as as i've mentioned before you know music's my background and my education side is is much more general that and specifically in terms of teaching music um so the computing the computing side of the curriculum um 
how how far into actually having to code do you do in primary school or was, or do you never quite get that far is it purely about the methods rather than the actual uh, the, uh, there's, there's a lot of building blocks in place to say this is how you get to the stage of perhaps programming but but there's many different there's many softer skills that you can learn from it which which is supported because it is cross curricular and that whole idea about being tech literate means you don't have to be a computer programmer but understanding how how things fit together in a technical world and, and, and to become tech tech literate in that um, in that sense means that you don't have to be a programmer certainly not but at the end you know in year six you know, there are parts of the curriculum which will say okay get, get, get into some computing uh, get, get get into some programming elements and all of this supports that but you don't have to be a programmer in any way shape or form towards it but by the end of years five and six absolutely the, the opening up to programming in different languages is very much open to any individual um, a, a, any any child who's all got all these all these building blocks in place from key stage one onwards and and how does barefoot sort of launch you into that is there sort of a natural progression of, of a child that's been um, using those sorts of skills in school and they've been through the, the the school's part of the barefoot project and they understand all of those things is there then a natural link into someone who says actually I'd, I'd quite like to use scratch or I'd like I quite like to be to start programming is there is there an, 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 a quick hop almost in into that world or it, it, it's it, it's an understanding that all all these things work together so it's it's not a single pathway there's many different parts to saying understanding and reinforcing the different parts of the curriculum which may, which are computer terms you do it in many different types of lessons from English to maths to history geography and all the rest of them coming together so it isn't a single route and a single path that you want to want to try and ascend it's very much how do you how do you put these things together and oh do you realize that in scratch you could actually build a program which would animate your, your your viking project for instance and you could make it work in a way that as a, as a child building upon what your knowledge will be to come to an animated view of how the vikings perhaps you know would would, would, would gain access across the, the oceans and all the rest of it to introduce that it simply becomes a flow of understanding of the subject at hand but introducing technology to that so it's 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 a little bit more subtle than just simply saying becoming a computer, computer programmer it's using technology in a way to support you in your journey to to become a more tech, techni technically literate person yeah um what, what, one of the things I liked from our, my conversation with Karen before was she was saying that they're, they're going to increase the resources and maybe have some YouTube clips on on some of the things to support the teachers and that kind of thing. And um, and what just struck me then was what you were talking about, um, some of the children then wanting to go on and do new things. Um, one of our kids did an animation for the backdrop of his year six performance, sort of end of year thing, and he'd learnt the whole thing on YouTube. You know, he, he'd started messing around on the computer. He'd sort of just followed it. In, I mean, it was, it was in incredible such an amazing sort of learning curve but just kind of oh yeah I like that I can do this and I can try this and then just hours and hours and hours but really focused and it was such a such a great thing for him to be able to do and I quite like that full circle of sort of us beginning to understand that teachers are going to be getting their resources and learning from things in the same sort of way it's not just about having a one-off workshop or a succession of workshops it's about just literally having that contact where you start something and then just knowing where to go for the resources and having the support and 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 the community as is one of the one of my season one podcasts was about podcasting and online communities and, and and all the resources that you just have and the support that you have across the world now let alone across the country or in your neighborhood you know it's just a question of finding what you're passionate about all the information that you need and you'll find it out there absolutely in, yeah. in, in in a fairly easy manner these days you don't need to wait for your head of department or um you know what used to be a sort of an lea person coming in and telling you how to do x y and z you know it's there for you to, to just to go and get really yeah absolutely and barefoot isn't exhaustive you know that there are plenty of resources there and lots of lesson plans to use but but this is a starting point and things like youtube and i, I use youtube endlessly for, for the job that i'm doing and i have areas whereby there are technical challenges and you'll just search it and youtube is immensely immensely useful where that's concerned so yeah going on if it, it sparks the idea say so where do i find out more if i haven't quite got something i don't quite understand it you can't say, well, it's not on barefoot. That's it. I can't do any more. It simply says, okay, so I know that I'm looking at this. I know that I'm looking at a particular term. Let's go and find it. And I love going on YouTube because I really, I'm not a great reader of technical bits. I need to, to be shown in front of me. And I think that really helps. Uh, and and that I know there are a few Vimeo things for, um, for, for barefoot to help you 
see somebody go through the process from front to end of picking up a lesson plan and saying what do I actually need to do with it and that's a teacher going through it so it's not somebody who's, who's never done it before it's somebody saying yeah I know what I need to do with the lesson this is how I've approached opening up the lesson plan and how I use it to sort of support me from front to back so yeah it's very very important and, and I think that's it it just takes the fear factor out doesn't it if you've seen someone do it and you literally do it step by step then you think well I can at least copy it and see how it goes and if it doesn't quite work then I can find out the bit I didn't quite get rather than just having a mirage of of data or or, or pages in front of you that you have to kind of work through to try and find the little bit that you what's need what's the worst that can happen yeah it, 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 what appears on screen isn't what you expected it to be and it may be a a splurge of colour you think that oh, really wasn't what I was after <laughs> but you may find from there by playing around with that you might find oh actually if I try not, nothing's been written down in front of me to say turn right instead of turn left but when I do turn right more opportunities open up to me and it is that it is that journey of saying and this is what the children clearly do all the time they will be saying well that hasn't quite worked but I like what it's done I'm going to play around with this a little bit more and it is you know the kids will love to play you know if they if they get hold of it uh, especially something like scratch if they say I want to draw a square and then make it rotate they're not quite drawing a square they're doing something else but actually I could draw I could draw many other shapes it's not just simply a square and, and that that enthusiasm to say from those areas of uncertainty and doing something which may not come out to be what you expect can actually open up other opportunities as well and just having that exp having that inquisitive mind and saying okay what else can I actually do with it is it is fantastic to see and the kids will love to do it so if anybody can grab hold of the program and say it isn't simply prescriptive it's supportive to say this is what you can do these here's some starting box and actually if you try something out and you get to do something different with it that's your journey that's that's what you can actually do i think that's great and that's just incredibly creative and 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 what i like about it and this is sort of the the whole point of the podcast really is is, is just sort of sharing um, ideas that are just slightly out of the box of, of, of um, okay, I'm, I've, I've got to do my lesson plan for this. And so you, okay, you've got the umbrella of barefoot, you've got the, um, the umbrella of, of what you're actually doing. So it's all taken care of. But within that, you've got the flexibility and you've got the chance just to light that fire and, and let the kids fly with it and, 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 and see where they go. And that's, that's what really gets them going. That's why they like gaming, because they can, they're just trying things out. If it doesn't work as they want, they change and they do different things. And so you really do have the scope to use that in many different ways. And because it's cross-curricular, and like you say, you can use it in all different types of subjects, you could really just broaden the whole thing out. And then that whole inspiration, all right, well, we don't quite know how to do this. How are we going to find it? It's a much greater starting point than actually kind of right now we're going to learn this piece of information okay off we go you know and and, and, I, and I guess essentially from BT's point of view those are the types of children that they need in terms of going into a tech world in 10 years time or whenever it is that they're going to be sort of going into the workforce because we don't know what they need to be we, we, it's, there's no possible way that we're going to know what the skills are they are apart from the fact that it's the creative side it's the inquisitive side and that way of learning is the key because they'll come up with what it is that whatever it is that we need to know as a yeah, society yeah. and 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 as employers in, in that at that time oh absolutely so yeah my, my so i've got twin boys and they they've just started their gcse year so uh last year there was uh, a lot of presentations around so what should they choose and what 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 avenues can they go down and what careers they want to do and just like any other 14 year old knowing the career that you're going to do at that stage it clearly isn't going to be on the horizon but that 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 part of saying so what is out there and the, the presentation turns around and I think that the, I think the, uh, the the numbers are along the lines of of all the jobs they can do during their lifetime 90% haven't even been invented yet clearly we're in that age you know and I know you know so I'm just a little bit older than that and but I can see the jobs changing immensely and it, even in the last five years it's exploded and that whole idea about digital creativity for instance so I, I don't what I don't see this as is that there is this whole idea about getting a child to be to understand how to program for instance and being technically technically literate there but if you produce an individual who has all the building blocks and understanding to say okay in a technical world how do we need to think how do we need to approach things then actually somebody who's nowhere close to being a computer programmer still has that that level of conversation that they can work with for, with a technical person as well so it actually helps everybody down the line five years down the line after they leave education if they've got the same grounding actually developing and collaborating means they are speaking the same language indirectly they won't be sitting there saying my algorithm says this and something you know my, I'm debugging this but the conversation piece is based upon the same structure 
means that anybody from any walk of life within an organization, if we are pushing the boundaries of, uh, of technical ability, means that we're talking the same sort of language anyway. Uh, and, and that really helps because you're not shoving a, a, a technical guy away in a corner and giving him something and thinking, is he going to do what I wanted to do? The conversations actually start at the same level up front. So we really do push the boundaries and we're a lot clearer early on with what, what's required and how that we're going to get there in a technical world. But also you can start to push the boundaries a lot quicker because you, you're thinking further ahead rather than just simply saying I've got a technical piece of work that needs to be done here and now you know, it's very much expanding and collaborating and, and and seeing people thrive and thinking about new things and and I can only see that as a good thing you know and 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 it's it sounds like um, I can almost imagine these people working in that kind of modern way you know that you sort of see the the Facebooks of um, of, of this world with sort of big open plan offices it's all about collaboration it's all about ideas it's all about coming together as you say it's not about sending one person into one room and another person into another room and so to even within the curriculum to have now we're doing geography or now we're doing this or now we're doing that and sort of um, compartmentalizing everything is is just not the way that the world is 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 in reality and it's also not the way that it's certainly going and how it's going to develop I don't think so I think having all of those skills on board is just it, it's certainly what I've heard when I went to the BT towers part of the tech literacy thing was what we were hearing from businesses you know we, we want people that are creative thinking together working together sparking ideas off and actually having a the, the, the skill set to be able to move forward into this unknown world it's not about I've got a master's degree in debugging or whatever whatever it would be you know it, that that isn't the skill set they're looking for because they don't know what the skill set is yet it's the fundamentals of what you need and it sounds like barefoot is absolutely an absolute building block of that and exactly what, how it's actually designed to work yeah and, and that's and that's actually another good element of barefoot so, so it will have the words the computing terms you need to cover but all these things to do with collaboration and how how people will work together are highlighted in every every lesson plan that's there it says oh you do realize this covers uh, collaboration and algorithms and also something else to do with debugging for instance all these are clearly marked to say you're covering many different aspects rather than teaching a single subject you're covering a broad range of skills be they soft or specific to a, a task in hand. So, so that, that's, that's really, you can see that working then. You can, the moment you open it up, you can see, oh, I'm covering five different topics here, literally through one lesson. And, and it's, it's, it's the case of the teachers do the, have lessons that they prepare and they deliver already. And there's not a lot of difference between what they do now and what they need to think about in, in, in that in that new sense of the computing curriculum. It's just the terms. It's just the terms that you're associating with those particular lessons that you're delivering, which will say, you are covering this as well. But there will be new bits and pieces, and hopefully those new bits and pieces that are being discovered will then ignite the fire of, oh, I wonder if, you know, just that bit of how can we do something more with it? How can we change it? What happens if type thing, that, that inquisitive nature? Yeah, well... I'm quite excited about coming to a workshop <laughs> and, I, and I'm not a teacher that needs to deliver it but um, just, just through chatting and just sort of really getting an understanding of how it works and, and how it comes together I, I, I personally would think that you know any fear that I would have had about how I was what it's involved and how it does would have completely dispelled and and I would just be thinking great the opportunities here are vast and I can see the children really liking it I can see myself being involved in in some of the developments that they do and not quite knowing where the developments are so that's an exciting prospect and just seeing how that could expand throughout the school and it just I think it must change the whole feeling and the ethos of the school almost sort of from the inside out because that creativity just sparks more creativity doesn't it? Uh, absolutely I mean pre pressures are, are, are high enough in environments whereby say something new we're having to do something extra on top but when when the understanding is there to say it isn't something new it's just a it's an approach that introduces new ideas that perhaps wouldn't have been unlocked beforehand and if that can inspire the uh, inspire the individual to say oh right, I'm thinking about something new then superb you know I, I, I hope that everybody who comes to one of my sessions is like yourself and, and go out, goes out as inspired as that and it, if you have the inspiration then it will mean you will walk out of their door and then say oh, I just want to find out more because it is one of those things as we were chatting earlier if you if you get introduced to something and you don't use it for the next sort of six months you'll be starting afresh and you really won't get to you, you really won't get the full impact from it if you can look at it in a way of saying I am on a bit of a journey I needs to understand new terms but when it comes together it's absolutely fantastic so 
if you're a if you're a training um, teacher and um, you might have had the chance of a, a barefoot workshop going on within university, I believe that um, Karen was saying that there's lots of that going on now, being involved in the universities and actually sort of at that sort of beginning stage, mm-hmm. just getting bare, bare, barefoot part of, of of that training, which I think is brilliant. And or if you're a, a teacher within a school um, that's going to have these workshops, the first point of call is literally if you go to barefootcas.org.uk then you can get in contact um, and, and get the ball rolling. You can download some things and, and just get a real feel for what it's all about. And from there on, it just sounds like you're taking in hand then. The the the, the way the workshops um, come about sounds very straightforward and, and, and very easy to organise. And then after you've had your workshop, you then just have the resources and hopefully, like I say, the inspiration and to take it through into everything else. And, and from there, it's really just up to you to, to expand it and um, help ignite that inspiration for the rest of the kids. And I'll be really interested um, if, you've, if you're already using the barefoot and um, you can get in contact and say how you're doing it, because it'd be really interesting to actually hear those people already involved, you know, how it's worked in the curriculum, what sorts of things that you've actually developed and where the, where the kids have taken you in, in an unexpected kind of way and um, and they're all things that we can share so as as always go to educationonfire.com you can leave comments and messages there and also we're going to try and keep the show notes as up to date as we can so as things develop we'll we'll make sure that any relevant links that change or will be updated and we'll make sure that you know all of that sort of stuff and um simon thanks very much for for joining me today it's been really really interesting and um Pleasure. and yeah we'll uh, look forward to, to hearing some more yeah fantastic thank you Thank you for listening to the Education on Fire podcast. For more information, please go to educationonfire.com.